We're getting short with the new LVOA-S model in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. So yeah, if you guys follow all the reviews in this channel, you're gonna go, well, Jonathan, you just reviewed this gun not too long ago, and you would be right, except it's a different one. This is actually the LVOA-S, and it's the shorter cousin to the longer LVOA-C. For those of you not familiar with the LVOA rifle, it's a licensed gun from Warsport. Crytek makes this little beauty, and it has all the trimmings of the original version. What makes it most iconic, it was the one that set the trend for this right here, that great little wire cutter front end, that nice, stubby, aggressive look, this huge, beefy rail, and that's what sets this gun apart and really set the tone for this look. So the LVOAS, the first thing you're gonna notice, and if you guys are really following the LVOA lineup externally, is the color. Yes, it's black. You actually get a black LVOA, which has been impossible to find up until now. Before then, you had some special edition colors that certain retailers carried like tan and gray, and of course, the iconic LVOA green color. Well, now we've got the black. So if you guys are fans of black rifles, you're set here. The difference is too, the rail length, that's really it. Honestly, the, the big difference between this and the LVOA C, which it's kind of confusing because you would think C is compact, but C is actually the long one, S is the short one, is you get an 11.75 inch outer barrel and the rail goes and covers it up versus that 14 plus inch rail and barrel on the other version. So it is considered in the real firearms world an SBR. And the good news is you're not gonna pay real firearms prices because a real one runs a hair under three grand. I mean, it is a super premium rifle and of course this being airsoft you do get super premium rifle here too but you're gonna pay just a fraction of that because hey it's airsoft so if you guys want to see the full breakdown i can give you a link over uh, in the corner here to the other lvoa c version review but i'll give you a quick rundown on the externals like i said to get this little slightly shorter outer barrel but still it's a good length it's a nice good rail length for you in fact i honestly think with the six standard rail it's kind of the perfect length uh, for those of you that found the lvoa c to be a bit on the long side and a little heavy because this is a solid aluminum rail. I mean, beefy, huge, and adds a little bit of heft. This one brings it down to something very manageable. You still get the Warsport top hat type flash hider, all this ultimate rail space on the top, all these additional segments here that will fit standard rail panels, which is really nice. You actually get one in the box too. Uh, but of course you can put them on there. You can also put the Warsport bungee, and I've even found that some other aftermarket mods like the PTS panels for their CMR rails will fit right on here too, which give it a really cool custom look. Moving on to the receiver, you're gonna get all the licensing with Warsport upper receiver, lower receiver, a real serial number here on this. Warsport Industries on both there, including some uh, markings here for their brand and location by the fire selector. And the fire selector too, you get the no pew pew and lots of pew. Actually, I like that the other uh, way they did with the actual uh, no bullet, one bullet, and three bullets here. You get the new Crytac smooth grip here on the bottom. You get the actual smooth trigger guard here that is actually removable, so you can hinge it down out of the way. And a flat trigger, which I also like that too. The flat trigger just gives it that super custom look. Moving on to the back, you get the iconic Crytac stock. Fits just about every battery you can find, especially lipos. You can fit a brick this way. You can fit a small buffer tube stick this way. You can fit the three type or the two type down in the side. You can really make it all work. And of course, under here, you do have the fuse. Super easy to get to. And also to pop this rubber butt pad off. Two little pull-up pins here. You kind of squeeze the tabs in, pull it off, and you can get there in a split second for battery changes. Rounding out externals, you do have that fire selector I did mention earlier. It is ambi, and of course, a sling attachment point here. And of course, the charging handle does work. You can lock it back and access the Crytac rotary style hop-up, which I've mentioned many times in reviews before. I love this thing. They use the four fins design on their buckings, and the actual uh, hop-up itself is numbered and clicks into place on each one. So you can actually go, okay, you know what? I'm running 0.25s. I can set it at six, and you go to 0.28, you can go up to eight or nine. You can actually remember what number works with what weight BB, and I like that touch. Under the hood, you get the Crytac built eight millimeter bearing bushings, that awesome kind of brassy, coppery colored mech box, quick chain spring system, 30,000 RPM, super high torque motor. And I know they call it a high torque. I call it super high torque. It's probably one of the best stock motors in this industry, hands down. And of course, Crytek was the trendsetter for MOSFETs. Now, if you wanna get really deep into internals and see all the bits and pieces, I'll go ahead and link a video up here in the corner for you guys that actually does a full teardown of the Crytek mech box. So you can really get nitty gritty on what's under the hood. But for all those you don't uh, wanna go through all that, let me just tell you right now, it is some of the best internals in a stock gun in the industry.
Take him to the chrono, you're gonna see a real high number. Now, I got an early sample, and I'll tell you, this thing's shooting a hair over 400. Don't let that scare you, though. I think it's gonna settle down. Brand new spring, first time shooting it. It's like the 406, 407 range. I think we're gonna see that settle back down to around 400 once that spring breaks in. Probably a hair under, which is just perfect. And remember, this is still a short barrel rifle, an SBR, so you can still maneuver in CQB with this thing, and that's a lot of punch. But remember, I did mention that quick change spring, so if you do have this thing a little hot for your indoor field, and you guys need turn it down, couple quick adjustments, and you can get that spring swapped out to something a lot softer. So if you guys have been holding out for something a little shorter and a little less heavy than the Crytac LVOA-C, which is the full-length one, you want something a little more manageable, something kind of in that mid-length. This thing is definitely not super PDW short, but I would say just about right. Definitely take a look at the Crytac lvoa S, and it's gonna be dropping here very shortly. If you guys are watching this video, it should be on the market and pre-order right now. And of course, if you're watching this after the release and you've just found it on the internet, it's gonna be available anywhere Crytek products are sold. And if you guys wanna learn more, I'll have a link down in the description below that will take you over, let you check it on out. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're not currently a subscriber, click on the logo in the bottom right or in the description and you'll always be in the know. Plus, if you like what you saw in this video and wanna learn more, I've got a link down there as well. And if you haven't had your airsoft fixed just yet, click in the videos on the right or use the info button at the top of the screen for more. And as the saying goes, everyone has an opinion and I do want to hear yours. So give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this video, comment and share.